everyone, welcome back to Larae's Lab, where we deep dive into the fascinating world of lab science, microbiology, and everything in between. Today's topic is something I think every medical lab science student or new tech should understand. What is microbiology? How does it relate to our job as medical laboratory scientists? And how is microbiology the bridge between traditional lab work and emerging fields like microbiome research? Microbiology is the branch of biology that focuses on microscopic organisms, those too small to see with the naked eye. This includes bacteria, fungi, viruses, parasites, protozoa, and more recently, archaea. It's one of the oldest and most essential disciplines in biology and medicine. Microbes can be pathogens, symbionts, or environmental recyclers. They live in soil, oceans, air, and most importantly for us, in and on our body. Microbiology is the foundation of a huge chunk of what we do as medical lab scientists. So how exactly does microbiology show up in the medical laboratory profession? Let's walk through where you'll find it. Clinical microbiology department is the biggest, obviously. This is where we identify infectious agents. If someone has a fever, a cough, diarrhea, an infected wound, their sample ends up in a micro lab. We plate and incubate cultures. We perform gram stains. We identify organisms using biochemical panels, small detoff, or PCR. We can run antibiotic susceptibility testing, and we report results that directly guide treatment. Microbiology now overlaps heavily with molecular testing, Think respiratory panels, GI panels, or MRSA PCRs. They are fast targeted tests that identify microbes using nucleic acids. Infection control and public health use lab results for microbiology for infection control in the hospitals, antibiotic resistance surveillance, tracking outbreaks and epidemics, and reporting notifiable diseases to the health department. We don't just report numbers. We identify threats, guide treatment, and protect public health. And that is the heart of microbiology. So microbiology versus the microbiome, what's the difference? So here's where things get interesting. If microbiology is about identifying microbes, especially pathogens, how is that different from the microbiome? They're related, but they're not the same is the answer. So classic microbiology focuses on individual pathogens. We isolate organisms using culture or molecular methods, and we use that to diagnose disease. Microbiome science studies the entire microbial community. We don't isolate organisms. We analyze them all at once. We're also trying to understand balance, function, and human impact. In a stool sample, microbiology would try to isolate Salmonella, Shigella, or C. diff. Microbiome science would analyze everything in that sample, all bacteria, good and bad, and then ask, what's the diversity like? Is this a healthy ecosystem? How is it affecting the host? In short, microbiology gives us the trees. The microbiome gives us the forest. <laughs> So why does microbiome studies matter to MLS? Because this is where the field is going, I think. And we have already have most of the knowledge. We just need to expand it. For one, we already understand bacteria. We're trained to differentiate gram positives and negatives, anaerobes versus aerobes, fastidious organisms. That foundational knowledge is essential for interpreting microbiome data. We're familiar with lab technology. <laughs> PCR sequencing, 16S, rRNA analysis, these are tools being used in microbiome labs and in clinical trials. If you're working in molecular diagnostics, you've already seen this type of testing. The clinical implications are growing. The microbiome is now linked to antibiotic resistance, obesity, mental health, autoimmune disorders, even cancer response, which means clinicians are starting to order tests related to the microbiome. And guess who has to process those samples? <laughs> As the microbiome grows more mainstream, CLIA certified labs will need MLS professionals who understand both clinical testing and microbial ecosystems. That's a major opportunity. So let's talk real world. Where are MLS professionals going to encounter microbiome testing or research? I would think um, some examples maybe we can talk about like stool microbiome panels. Companies are offering clinical gut microbiome panels to evaluate GI symptoms or guide probiotic use. Text may help extract DNA, run sequencing, or process bioinformatics results. Medical labs also prepare and screen donor stool for FMTs, which are fecal microbiota transplants, and this would help treat recurrent C. diff. This is a direct tie in between micro and microbiome. If you work in a research affiliated lab, you might process microbiome samples for clinical research instead. Um, this gives you a foot in the door for roles in translational research or biotech. Some MLS are learning R or Python to help interpret sequencing data. It's a powerful niche. Someone who understands both the wet bench and the data would have a leg up for opportunities in data analysis and bioinformatics. So to wrap up, microbiology is not a dying field. <laughs> it's evolving. And the microbiome is a natural extension of the work we already do. If you're an MLS who loves micro, this is your chance to grow into a cutting edge space whether that's in diagnostics, public health research, or even education. So stay curious, keep learning, take a course in microbial genomics. 
Watch microbiome seminars. Start reading literature outside your bench. You have all the right pieces. You just need to connect them. Thanks for spending time with me here on Larry's Lab. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And let me know in the comments, do you want to work with the microbiome? What would you want to learn next?